Hey, what's up, guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're going to be taking an academic look at making our own effects with expressions. Thanks, Thunder. I appreciate you. So you know how some of the After Effects default effects have some like little things that are just kind of annoying? Not all the time, but sometimes. Like when you used to not be able to swap the colors on ramps. You could solve that with a pseudo effect or an expression. And that's kind of what we're going to do today for linear wipe. This one's a bit more complicated, but it can be handy in certain situations. So let's take a look. All right, so for example, right now you can kind of see this text is in here because there's a gradient in this thing. And this is just a junky example, but you can kind of see what goes on here. I have this animated in, and I want to move this around. In the default linear wipe effect, if you have something animated in, you decide to move it later on, and you start to move it, you notice that the linear wipe stays where it is but you might want it to just move with your object so the animation stays the same. Linear wipe works in comp space, but I don't always want that. So with the one I've built, we can actually go back in time here, move this text down until it fades in pretty much, and you notice that the animation is not changed. We can do the same thing with the background layers. We can take this yellow one and offset it, and we can move the one below that's highlighting all the rooftops so we can get kind of a weird glitch thing as it animates through. Hopefully you can find something less junky to make it on. The base effect of this is just a mask. We're using expressions to control the position and the rotation, but that's about it. So let me show you how this is built. All of these layers in here have the expression applied to them. And if we click on one of them, you can see that the mask animates over here at the beginning. This is all accomplished with two expressions. Although this first one is kind of big, but we'll get through it. Also, these expressions will be on the website, so don't worry about typing them in as we go along. All right, so there's a few parts to this expression. This first section is just grabbing control information. This second part builds the actual mask. This for loop handles our transforms, so our rotation and our position. This little line here creates our path, and these are the functions that handle rotation and translation. Okay, I'm not actually using expression controls here. I'm using a pseudo effect I made, but you can do all of this with expression controls. You just need to make sure that you pick up the correct things. All right, so in this first one, we're getting our size parameter out of here. You can see it's wrapped in this mole function. That's just going to multiply both of these values by a number. In this case, it's going to be 0.5, so we're basically cutting the size in half. And the reason why we're cutting size in half is because we're going to start from a central point to draw our mask. So we want to go negative by half the amount and positive by half the amount. Feather, we're just going to bring that value in. And then we're going to set the size value. I think I can actually use plus equals here, but I'm setting the size equal to size plus an array that's feather comma feather. So in all directions, we're going to add the feather amount. That pushes our mask out by the feather amount on all the sides so that you don't see the feather just like in linear wipe until it actually starts animating in. If I duplicate this effect and then set its scale back to 100 because we're kind of far gone from what it was originally set to and reset this, you can kind of see where about this was. So if I zoom out and we add like 20 to our feather, you can see it bumps out by 20 pixels on all sides. That way the feather is now outside of what we see. All right, I'm gonna dump that because we don't need that. Then for position, we're gonna use it as an offset. On some layers like text, zero, zero is like the middle point, but on other layers like comps, 960 by 540 if it's an HD comp would be where you'd wanna start the mask at. I couldn't figure out a way to build a preset or anything that automatically builds that for you. It's one of the slight drawbacks of this method. And then we're setting up completion and it's kind of complicated because we need completion to start full at zero, which would be a value of like one or 100. And when completion gets to 100%, i.e. when the wipe has completed itself, we actually need the values to be zero. And the first thing we're doing is dividing the whole value by 100, and that's so that we can take its range from zero to 100 into zero to one so that we can use it for multiplication. So that's this part right here. So then let's tackle this part. All this is is bringing in the actual control, and from that we're subtracting 100. So when completion is 100, it's zero, which is exactly what we need. But the problem is when completion is zero, we're at negative 100. That doesn't work so well. So what we're going to do is use the absolute value, which is basically just dropping off that negative sign. So this gets us a range from zero to one, although technically it's one to zero, because when completion is zero on here, our value over here will be one. Hopefully that makes sense. So this part's a little bit tricky to explain. When I first used this range from zero to one, because I had built this in basically two halves instead of the full size, when I had it at zero, it didn't go all the way across. It actually stopped halfway. And that's because we really need to go two times the size. We need to like double it back in. 
So what I ended up doing is instead I converted my range from one to negative one. So now we have a range that's two times the size that we used to have before, and it brings it all the way back to a sliver so that everything goes away. Hopefully that'll make sense when I explain this next section. But first, how do we get that one to negative one range? We currently have a zero to one range, and we need to basically double that. So we multiply it by two, and that'll give us two to zero. So we subtract one, which will give us one to negative one. All right, so now let's talk about how we're gonna build our points. First, let's bring this back down to zero so that we can see all of our points. So what we're doing here is we're building a new array, and point zero is gonna be equal to size zero, so that's our x value, comma negative size one. Now remember these values are set to half of what I actually have the size set to. So this first point is 960, negative 540, which puts it here. The next one is almost the same, except for the y value is positive, so it's 960, 540. So this side doesn't move unless you change the size parameter. The next two points are gonna be the ones that actually perform the wipe. So they're gonna be multiplied by that completion value, but only the values on x, hence the linear part of the wipe. So for this point over here, we have negative size zero, so it's negative 960, multiplied by our completion value, comma, size one, which is 540. So maybe this will make the range part make more sense. So if completion here is one, and our size value is a maximum of 960, we have negative 960 times one, and that'll leave our point here. So in our previous range, when it was just zero, the value would be zero. And in our case, that is right here in the middle. So what I did, instead of stopping at zero, I made the range go back to negative one. So that would make negative 960 here, multiplied by negative one, equal 960, which would put us all the way back here to the beginning. So that's why the range is built like that. So hopefully that makes more sense. And point three, which is actually the fourth point, is built the same way, except for the y value is negative 540 again, so this corner. So after this section right here, we're done with the actual wipe portion of this thing. The rest just controls its angle and where it starts. So in this next section, we're setting up a for loop just to loop through those points of that array. So we're gonna start with i equal to zero, which is our first point. And then while i is less than four, we'll keep running this loop. So it'll stop after point three. And after every loop, we're gonna increment i by one. So it's i plus plus. So points i is just basically every one of these points. And we're gonna run that through a function I built called rotate point. And we're gonna send that points i. So this is gonna take our point value, send it into this rotate function, and then return us a new point to overwrite the one that we had. Same thing goes for our translate point function. And once we're done through that loop, we have new points in different positions, and we're gonna create our path. So our next section is the rotate point function. And it's gonna take a value called P, which stands for point. Here we're gonna grab our angle according to this control, and our default is 90, because I really want that to be our zero point, so we're gonna just subtract 90. After that, we're gonna rotate our points. I actually looked this up on Khan Academy. I'm gonna leave a link for that below because they're pretty awesome. They have free courses. I, I think they're actually all free that are all math related. And this actually comes from one that's called like Pixar in a box. So if you want a detailed explanation of how this is calculated, go check that out. It's actually pretty interesting if you like math. And if you don't, go check it out anyway. Math is good for you, damn it. All right. <laughs> all right, so for X, we're gonna take this point that we're given take its x value, multiply that by cosine of the angle that we have set, and then we're gonna subtract the y value times the sine of the angle. And then y is kind of like a flip floppy opposite of that, where we take x times the sine of the angle this time, and then we're gonna to add to that the y value times the cosine of the angle. It's gonna give us a new x and y value, so we're gonna put that into an array and return it. So it's gonna overwrite whatever value we originally had. And then we have one last function, translate point, which really doesn't need to be a function, but I made it just for cleanliness sake. It's gonna take a point P, and then it's gonna immediately return P plus position, so our position offset control. So whatever point this is, is gonna be pushed by whatever these values are. If this is 10 comma 10, it's gonna move 10 to the right and 10 down. And that's it for that expression. We just have one more left. So let's load up this really long expression in feather, and that's basically just grabbing in the feather control and making it into an array of two values. And that's it. We've built ourselves an entirely new effect. So let's check it out. So I'm just gonna mess with the one that we have here. So you can see if we change this angle, we actually get a new angle. Let's go to 45 degrees if you want, and we have a 45 degree angle. You can bring it in. You just kinda have to remember which way X is. It takes a second for it to actually do anything, and we're not gonna actually see it yet, because I haven't soloed that. Uh, let's scale this guy up, and what's interesting 
is that now our mask will actually scale with it too. So however this thing is animated, whether you scale it or move it or anything, as long as you're not changing, I think that's the anchor point probably, it will stay locked to where it is. It will not change unless you're actually animating it. So let's make this bigger. Let's bring this in a lot because the text is actually smaller. And you can see that it actually cuts it where it needs to be. If we feather it out, it will feather appropriately. Now this is scaled, so this value is technically scaled because this is probably more than 14 pixels. So just keep that in mind. If you want this thing to actually cut off both sides, you can just pass it through like that using the position offset. So now what's interesting about this is that however you have this thing ordered in here, in this loop, you can control whether or not this thing rotates first or moves first. So be aware of that. I wanted mine to rotate first because then I can control where this thing moves a little easier. But if you flip flopped them, like if we did that to this one, and we took this and did this first, and then add it back to it, make sure that we're clicked on that. And then we zoom out, we start moving this thing around, you'll see that this actually moves in the angle. If we flip flop this back the way it was, a couple of undos there, click in here, add it back. Now as we move this position, you'll see it just slides across directly in X and Y. So if you need to move it that way instead, you can build this however you want it to work. But the best part about it as before is that once we have this thing where we want it to be, we can move this text around and it just goes where we want it to go. So that's it for this effect. It's not something flashy, but when you need it, it is super helpful. All right, guys, that's the end of this one. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure you keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. I wrote a cool thing about explainer videos and kind of some good client practices for that. So make sure to check that out. As always, I am Joe. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Oh, hello there. If you live by Publix, congratulations. You've won the lottery. If you like fizzy water, it's even better because they're just awesome. Go grab some.